My name is Jonathan Westwood and I'm a rhubarb grower and I work with a forced rhubarb within the Yorkshire Rhubarb Triangle. The Rhubarb Triangle is where forced rhubarb production was concentrated um, when it was brought up into Yorkshire and it's between the cities of uh, Wakefield, Bradford and Leeds. Uh, my family have been growing rhubarb since the late 1870s on various farms in the area. The farm where I live, we've been farming there since uh, at least 1903. And I've been sort of working on the farm since uh, I was about nine years old on and off. It's a very interesting crop to grow, but it is very, very hard work. Most of my staff have been in the rhubarb industry for two or three generations, really. And um, they're all local, local people. In the pre-1960s, they used to 200 rhubarb growers uh, and they produced hundreds and thousands of tons of rhubarb during the First and Second World Wars, uh, when obviously fruit was um, very scarce. Now there are only about 10, but now it's become more of a, a delicacy really, uh, as it's very expensive to produce and it's very labour intensive. The partnership with Booth is, is really, really good. They're a very friendly company to work for, which I put down to partly being, because it's a family, still a family run firm, lots of the bigger supermarkets now you're just, you're just a number on their books. But with booze, I believe you're sort of part of the family almost. Obviously there are different grades of forced rhubarb as well, so booze tend to get the best quality sticks and the best grade. I think our rhubarb especially gets because of the way I take care of it outside, in the, in the two summers it's grown outside, and obviously the attention we, we, we apply to it inside the shed as well. The way it's traditionally pulled by candlelight still, and uh, my staff are very, very good at selecting the right sticks for the, for the right job. It isn't actually grown by candlelight. Rhubarb is actually growing in the dark. It makes the sticks straight because the, stri the sticks then are looking for light, so they force themselves up searching for light. It's only picked in candlelight. We're picking candlelight because if you get too much light in the rhubarb sheds, it turns the leaves green and the leaves want to be a vivid yellow if, if possible. Uh, this is one of the forcing sheds that were originally built on this farm in about 1926 and the rhubarb is brought into the forcing sheds and packed into beds here and it's heated and uh, watered and you can see the effect that this has on the rhubarb. It's obviously growing in the dark to cause the rhubarb to go straight and um, keep, keep the red colour and the yellow leaves. It's got to break its dormancy and, 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 and it's basically thinking it's springtime. This I would say is almost a perfect stick of rhubarb. This variety in here is called Timpley. And um, as you can see, it's a straight, straight, very straight stick of rhubarb. It's quite a deep pink, is that one. And it's got a lovely yellow leaf on the top there. It wants to be turgid and not, and not flaccid, because that shows how fresh it is. I hope Booth like our rhubarb because it's the, the top quality and also the way we present it and uh, where we select it. It's as fresh as it can be, I would say, between 12 and 24 hours it will be in their stores. I still prefer it in a crumble, personally, but um, it can be used in, in quite a few dishes. It goes well with duck and pork and um, various types of oily fish. I like custard and ice cream together. <laughs> rhubarb is definitely my blood and it has been since I left school at the age of 18. It's just a nice crop to work with. It's completely different from any other crop. It, Obviously you can see what it looks like in the sheds. It's quite spectacular to look at, but it's also very interesting to grow because it's not, it's not a crop that, it, it's different every year basically. So you can't, it's never the same. <laughs>